Greetings and welcome to In Depth. I'm DK Ross. Now, very happy not to be in the studio. If you hear a sewing machine in the background, there's a reason for that. Now, imagine someone saying that I make bags, so I don't tote feelings anymore. I don't tote anymore. Well, we're going to talk to the person themselves because you're seeing some of their work behind us. But the lady herself, Medina Donald Baird of Ashley's Only One Bags. Hello, ma'am. How are you doing? Good afternoon. I'm fine, thank you. Very glad to be here. No, I nearly get distracted because I'm looking at the trees and stuff before we step into the actual place itself. But I heard there's an interesting story of you looking for bags and not seeing bags, so you decided to do a thing. Yes. And that's what led to this. That's so what led to this. So fill us in on that now. Um, well, I needed a bag, and um, particularly a crossbody bag, like this. And everywhere I looked, I wasn't satisfied with not just the material, but the finished product, how it's stitched. You pull it so you don't rip apart four threads falling out. And I got tired of it, so I attempted it. The first time I got it really wrong. The second time I perfected it. And people started seeing it, liking it. I made four, five, six. You know, your family support first. They bought all. And I kept doing it, doing it until, well, I know I make 67 different sizes of bags. And we want to get to that 67 style, huh? but look, is, is it that you had a sewing history be before you saw the bags and said, nah, I must do this better? Or is it that you're just saying, well, it, you can't go worse than this? Well, I grew up in Miaro. My mother always had a sewing machine. And ever so often, you know, just do a little straight stitch, little gathers, make a curtain, you know, nothing else. That's it. So you needed to get the machine or you had the machine already? I had my mother's machine. I still have it. I had my mother's machine from since that's like more than 15 years. I still have that machine. I'm a first at Betsy. Um, so I started with that and I bought about nine domestics since and then I went full into all um, business type machines. Okay, okay. Like commercial. Commercial, and uh, yes. It's one thing to have family say, okay, well, this is nice. Mm -hmm. But sometimes family could just be supporting you no matter what. Well, it was family and church people around family and then the whole of my arrow and yeah, we <laughs> grew. And it's one thing to say, okay, well, the crossbody bag. But speak a little bit about the process from one crossbody bag to is, is 67 years old. Yes. So I do, so you have your basic cross strap, you have your spaghetti strap, you have your origami, you have your origami bow. I love doing patchwork like these. Um, you have drawstrings. So the concept of a bag requires you to be able to tote something, to, to carry. So once you know how you want to conceptualize that idea, it's easy to build and make sure you have a good handle. Make sure, well I specialize, I do my bags with something called thread welding. So you look at the side and you'll see the stitch in there. That is one of the signature pieces. To ensure that your bag will not burst on you, it will not rip on you, you need to burn that out or cut that out for you to ever say it's effective. And so. most of the times where you'll have that rip is by those seams and yes. things, and that is where you're actually taking the time to have that finish. Yes. If your bag for any reason has a joint to the bottom, you'll have three seams on the inside and then your layered lining fabric will not be joined at all. So you have reinforcement. The work, I know some people talk about the University of YouTube, yes. but is it that you just have a concept and decide to work it out and figure it out, how's the best way to do it, or how do you get one, inspiration, and two, some of the, I guess, knowledge in terms of saying, okay, well, to do this type of bag, I need to do this. Um, well, the only thing I ever went to YouTube for was trying to figure out how to install a zipper, because I wasn't certain of that. After many visits to Pennywise and seeing, conceptualizing, seeing and... Con couldn't figure it out, went back to YouTube, did it on the basic, and then you now I can install zippers in many different ways just from learning one technique. And one of, the th one of the things that I'm hearing, or I think I hear it, is this level of creativity. Um, what influences you? Does someone come and say, I want a bag like this? Or do you just have an idea and say, hey, let me work it out? I build it on my own, and then 
post it up on Instagram, Facebook, and get feedback, how much you like it, the, what additions they wanted, and continue growing from there. Do you have a favorite? Um, I like this right now. So right now I'm doing first quarter um, pieces. So first quarter pieces include like this patchwork large pieces, things more with green, um, crunchy straps and stuff like that. And then tourism season is almost over for us. So I just finished a full souvenir line running straight to um, cruise ship complex. And this quarter, second quarter is going to be going through more light florals and blends because we deal with Mother's Day um leatherette pieces for father's day and then we're going straight into third quarter which will take me to um emancipation and independence which will be again more souvenir pieces and then full bright colors what's that like and let me explain myself uh the way that it seems that you've kind of mixed the creative side the artist within you with just drunk or sober mind your business this is what we're doing at this point in time and even though you're using your artistry to do it you're doing it with the end product in mind of people purchasing pieces yeah. um, how easy is it to have that combination um, well I do I keep myself relevant um, through social media lots of social media present whether it is a needle went through my finger or I'm just having a wonderful day at sales, or I'm just meeting and greeting, sure enough, customers who are satisfied, having conversations about random things with bags. Um, I keep myself really relevant with that, trying to get myself in front of a camera. At any given point of time, I do that. And then they have the products that stand for themselves. A lot of people come back and say, I had this bag from since Carrie Festa, and I don't need the next bag, and this bag is real strong. But look, all my cousins line up for one. So I have that. And sometimes that could be self-preservation too, because you're, the person who have the bags on Skyfester, they want to keep the bag. Yes. But every time you see that cousin, yeah. when I know they're coming, I start to hide it, because I know they want to borrow it, and they borrow yes. the stick long, long, long. So that's how we grow. Um, that's how we grow. And it's always nice to have someone speak to a product and say, I have it this length of time, as opposed to new customers all the time. Um, well, new customers for me shows that I'm growing because if I just have a, a continuancy of the same customers, it means that I'm not expanding out. But the new customers bring me um, new ideas and new motivations because sometimes I built it with zippers for before and now they want snaps, they want um, grommets, they want different types of finishes. So uh, it allows me to do a little more work on something I already personalized. And do you have a timeline for yourself? So it's 67 styles now. At the end of third quarter, I want to have two more offerings. Do you do you try to push yourself like that or is it a little more organic? Um what I will do is for the most part right now I have been redeveloping different techniques to finish certain products. That's what I've been doing. I have I, I don't intend to expand much more. There's like three more things I have in my drawing book that I wanna look into, but I'm oh, trying to go the waterproof route for offshore, which is a totally different market because I'm doing the service people right now. I'm doing the teacher's market. I'm doing the doctors, the lawyers. The, I'm doing the everyday school child. Now I want to hit offshore where waterproof is where they need to meet me. What's thinking like dry bags? Um, yes, or things that you could, you could put certain small tools and stuff in and show inside outside it would not get wet. It's strong, it's sturdy, it's stable. You could pick it up with the the boom handles. Okay, so with that we're going to take a short break and then come back into it because I want to talk about some of the techniques and that you put into the products that you make. But stay with us, we're talking about Ashley's Only One Bags with the lady herself, Medina Donald Baird. We'll come back with more. Welcome back. We are having a conversation with Medina Donald Baird and Ashley's only one bags is the is the main is the main thing. But going into it, you spoke about refining techniques. 
how does it how does it feel when you're doing something and then you realize but wait no i could do it this way instead it feels yeah. good it beats time it gives me a production run a, a, a better place so instead of doing like 10 for the day i could run 15 in the same space and some of that is like what because i remember speaking with somebody who's a tailor and he said just doing the same color like we're doing pants we're doing pants but the same material and just the not having to change thread mm -hmm. helps him save so much time what are some of those things okay well share, share some you know there. everybody has the positive days and the negative days right so there are some days where if I didn't feel like changing the thread, we take a day off today. You have to change thread in all the machines. You have the sages, you have the presses, you have, yeah. So that, that delays. But like um, capping the zips on the end, this is running them straight and then double stitching it on the side. That makes a difference. And it does not decrease the quality of your product and your finish, which is most important. Because in do no we stand for reversible, durable, machine washable, quality and cost. That's what we stand with. So when you're approaching to get a bag, just know you're looking for something. We aim to go reversible first, but durable is first, 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 first. Must be durable, must be machine washable. So for the most part, everything in this store is machine washable, except possibly um, your marine leatherette pieces, and yet you could wet wipe those to make sure you keep it clean. Um, yeah. It's always nice because a bag is something that you can have all over the place. Yes. And to be able to say, okay, well, just the comfort of knowing that it's all right, man. I could wash it or I could take care of it this way and it will still last because sometimes you might want to wash something. You start off with a bag, you wash and then end up with an egg or something like that. <laughs> I've, I've, never, I've never had that problem. Um, recently, though, a customer came to me with a bag she's had for, I'll say, three and a half years. Um, and she finally ripped it down the side. After three and a half years and about 40 washes, I think you got value for your money. I think she was trying to. Yes. So. But. <laughs> it was not in a seam space. It was mm. snagged on something. So it wasn't like a, a defective piece on my part. It was more like it got hooked on something somewhere along the line and it ripped in a way that didn't have any stitches, that didn't have any effects in the material. That, so she was like, yeah, yeah, that's true. I could tell because I built it with my hands. I know what exists. But in terms of building with your hands, though, it's one thing to have the six family members and a few members from the church, and it's something else when people say, hey, no, this girl, no, this young lady, I want a bag from her. So scaling up the business, what, does that, what, does, what has that been like? Um, it was a dream. In the beginning. <laughs> okay, so I scaled up um, during COVID when everybody's production was done. I was busy building masks. So building masks allowed this wonderful space to exist. Um, back then we were with um, planting seeds. They assisted through career with grants and we were able to scale up with equipment and stuff. And then we continued, I continued to build and build. I specialize in embroidery services, as you can see in some of the products. And I continue with this. And only last year I started having a full team. Well, two women that assist me. And you spoke about having possibly your favorite bag. Yes. Uh, is there one that people go to the most? Um, well, I honestly really push the souvenir pieces. So I have a souvenir line that incorporates the seal pan, the scarlet ibis, the chaconia, and I, uh, the flag, the map, different things that talk about Trinidad and Tobago, like the leatherback turtles being one of four places that they come to nest. I push the story and I push the bag products so that, you know, you have a little bit more knowledge about us rather than just red scarlet ibis, scarlet ibis, seal pan, you know, do a little more info. And I'm also doing places. So I already did the mock-up and the templates for going to the Nile River Swamp, the Pitch Lake, um, Maracas, is it all, place with the willow tree? Paramount, the Paramount Lookout, mm. I already did all the artwork for those places. Um, it's just a matter of what I want to put them on as an element. I don't, you can do these small pieces and then like one bag in full detail with all the, yeah. And we speak, and you're talking about it, and I see you looking at it in your mind, <laughs> yes. and just that passion is a, is a blessed thing, because some people get up, 
and they go to something that they don't want to, but it seems as though that is not what you deal with on a daily basis. I, I love bag building. I love seeing people happy. I love walking through high streets and friends and just, hey, that's one of my, hey, how are you doing today? I love your bag. Yes, my sister bought it from me from, I said, do you know who built that bag? And I have the conversations. And then I give them a fresh card in case they want to get the next one. I do this. Customers get attested this. And <laughs> anywhere I meet them, I, I just stop and say hi and thank you for supporting, look at well, you'll get vexed if you don't talk about the fact that it's not just bags. I don't think it's just bags. Um, so it's bags. It used to be more fabric um, hair products. I do pillows um, and I do a lot of embroidery services, which falls under apparel. So like your logo, you can get that done, your hats, aprons. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it may be an item of clothing or something else, fabric, that somebody brings to you to get done in terms of like embroidery services as well? Yes. All I do otherwise is the kimono or the ropes, clothing wise. Yeah. Okay, and is different materials? Um, yes. Okay, asking that question because hey, I've taken notes as well. Yes. Okay. And you can get for your height because I know you're taller than you most men. The worst so thing you can get. Sometimes you have this thing and you, they it's, say large and you put it on and you're feeling, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's patsy. <laughs> yes, I feel sexy because it didn't cut in a kind of way, no man. Um, yes. All of my knee and words just breeze out, breeze out. You can get out. it up to your ankle, we just need to take a measurement and okay. proper fit. Nice, and all for me too yes. because my arms are a little longer. So sometimes when you see me flip twice, it's not style, it's just because I couldn't reach in the first place. <laughs> uh, but, the, um, but that's scaling out though. Uh, I know you said you work on remaining relevant, remaining current, remaining in a place and platforms that people can see you. Uh, how much of it is dream? How much of it is inspiration? How, how much of it is someone says, okay, I want it with snaps instead of zips, and they said, hey, I like that, let me add that to the line, in terms of moving forward, even though they say they don't want to expand too much past the 67. It's about three, you say, you have in that book yes. again? So what, and then two, I'll ask the question, of what you're waiting on to start them three? Okay, so the expansion isn't just about design. The expansion for me right now is, so I've been doing, I get an order for like 50 pieces, 150 to ship to Barbados. So the expansion is now not just in our almost saturated market, if you know Tobago, but the expansion is more hitting North America and further up. So that's what I mean, like I'm limiting myself to the variation, but the expansion in terms of quantity, that's the road I want to hit. Okay. Because sometimes when you're going wide, you can't go as far as well. So that makes sense. Uh, but the person trying to reach you, you know, we had to talk about contact information, platforms, even though you said you're on platforms, where do people find you on these platforms? So on all platforms, there's Ashley's Only One Bags. Ashley's Only One Bags. Um, you can email me at Ashley's Only One Bags at gmail.com. You can find me on WhatsApp at 1-868-473-9731. Instagram or Facebook, Ashley's Only One Bags. Hashtag AO1BAGS. And the finish is nice. Durability up to, up to way, way. And any, anything else that I didn't ask that you wanted to share in the select 30 seconds we have? So, we also provide embroidery services and we can put anything on anything. That is whether it want to be apparel, a hat, the back of a backpack, you name it, we can put anything on anything. And it is not limited to color. Yeah. Medina, Donald Baird, yes. Ashley's Only One Bags, thank you so much for the time that you shared with us. Yes. And on behalf of everyone from the TTT News team, I'm DK Ronster. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us. But even before we close, we have another version coming up because I pack my thing. I come for some lessons and some learning. So we're going to see how I do. Fingers crossed for that. Fingers crossed.